This is the, the ninth collection of UFO files to arrive at the National Archives in Kew and this consists of 25 separate files and somewhere around 7,000 pages of information. So the papers that have been released today uh, talk about the motives behind the intelligence study that was carried out. Uh, and what kind of things do they reveal? Well, the uh, intelligence officer was really keen to have this study commissioned. He, there's, there's some very interesting papers in the policy file uh, from 1993 where he is briefing on the subject and he's saying it's not because he talks to little green men every night, it's just that he thinks that this is a subject that the, the DIS and the MOD should take seriously because no study had ever been conducted. And during um, his, his brief, he, he lists a number of possibilities about what UFOs could actually be, and, he, and one of them is mass hallucinations, and he says that you know, we can rule that out. Uh, some of them are hoaxes, he says there's a lot of nonsense that's written about the subject, but despite that, there is, there's still a hard core of sightings by credible observers, such as um, military pilots, um, air traffic controllers, police officers, that kind of thing. And he says one of the possibilities is that some of these sightings could have been caused by um, secret aircraft, Black Project aircraft, perhaps piloted by the Americans or even by the Russians or Chinese. It can't be ruled out. And he then goes into all the possible natural explanations such as clouds and ball lightning and meteors. And he has to consider the possibility that some of them uh, could be extraterrestrial life forms. And he says that um, that's possible, but there's no direct evidence. Now, if any of those possibilities, such as the extraterrestrial or the, um, you know, the, the, the Black Project um, aircraft, were true, there are implications for national security. And he says that the national security implications are considerable because we have many reports of strange objects in the sky and we've never investigated them. If they are American, then there's probably no threat to national security, although it would be most alarming if they were flying around without clearance in our airspace. If the, um, if the aircraft were Russian or Chinese, um, then there would be a threat to uh, national security and we would urgently need to establish the nature of the craft and its capabilities. And then he turns to the possibility that they could be alien or extraterrestrial. And he says that if the sightings are of devices not of the Earth, then their purpose needs to be established as a matter of priority. And he says that there are no apparent, there's been no apparent hostile intent, but the other possibilities are military reconnaissance, scientific, or perhaps even tourism. That they're coming here um, as we would go, you know, to another country or to visit a national park, they're coming across the universe to visit us. And he then adds another interesting little thing, which turns up in the, um, in the final report that was produced. He says, that if these reports are taken at face value, then devices exist that do not use conventional reaction propulsion systems um, and they have a very wide range of speeds and are stealthy. And he suggests that uh, we could use this technology if it exists. I, you know, if we could capture one of these things, it could probably be used as some kind of um, battlefield weapon or new technology. And as with previous releases, there are also several sightings reports uh, in this collection of files. Um, can you tell us a bit about what some of those? Uh, one of the um, one of the collections of papers in these files is about um, a series of sightings that took place in, in West Wales, in Pembrokeshire, in uh, 1977 and 1978. And this was the subject of some particularly lurid um, tabloid headlines. Uh, at the time, the, uh, the Bermuda Triangle was, um, was very um, popular. There's lots of TV documentaries about that. And this area of um, Wales became known as the Welsh Triangle because there'd been so many mysterious sightings in that area. And there'd also been reports from various people of um, um, people seeing silver-suited humanoids that were believed to have been the, you know, the UFO pilots that had been seen wandering around in the countryside late at night. And the reason this turns up in the files is because one, um, one of the people who, who made one of these reports contacted her local MP, who um, was Nicholas Edwards. And she was a lady who ran a hotel on the Welsh coast. And one day in 1977, quite late at night, um, she'd been woken up by an object that she'd seen in the sky and this had descended into a field and she described it as like the moon falling down from the sky. And it landed in a field at the back of her property. And as she watched, she said she saw two very tall faceless humanoids who emerged from this object about the size of a minibus 
and appeared to sort of wander around in the field taking measurements. And she was absolutely petrified by this experience, and so much so that she thought, you know, the MOD should be looking into this, particularly because in the field there was a, um, what, what, what later emerged to be a Royal Observer Corps, a Royal Observer Corps um, shelter, um, a bomb shelter of some kind, so obviously something was going on there. Um, so this was reported to the M MP. He passed it to the Ministry of Defence in Whitehall, and, and, and this was a very unusual thing for them to do. They asked um, a, um, an RAF officer from nearby RAF Brody, Airbase to go and have a, um, an interview with the lady who had reported this sighting. So he went down there, he examined the area where this thing had landed and he couldn't find any obvious explanation for this, so he briefed the Ministry of Defence on what he discovered. And the, um, the, the person who was the head of the UFO desk at the time, he was so um, concerned about this that he had a private word with the Provost and Security Service, which is the RAF police, and he, he asked them to make some inquiries locally. And it turned out that, um, that um, they suspected, as a result of this um, investigation, that someone had been uh, involved in a practical joke and that they'd borrowed a, a firefighting suit that had been on display in a local shop. And that they'd put this thing on and it was sort of white with a big black visor over the face and this person had been walking around in this suit late at night and maybe this, this had been um, what had caused some of these, these weird sightings. But even so, they still couldn't explain them. This was one possible explanation. They weren't saying that, um, you know, we can forget about the Welsh Triangle, but it, what, there was some very clear suggestions that, that someone had perhaps been pulling somebody's leg. And were there other sightings from uh, around the country? Was there one in Brighton? Yeah, um, around... Uh, 2005, 2006, um, people began to release Chinese lanterns on a, on a regular basis. I believe they became popular at the Glastonbury um, Pop Festival in the, from the summer of 2003. And uh, lots of people hadn't seen these things in the sky before. So when, when people started reporting fleets of, um, bright, of, of lights, revolving lights that appeared to be moving in formation, um, some people became very worried about it and there's one report in the file from 2005 where a, a lady from Brighton had seen a group of these objects in the sky and she'd rung the MOD to report this and she was absolutely petrified and she was asking for an explanation. She was saying all her friends were really worried about what they'd seen in the sky and looking at it now, looking at the, the, you know, the details of the sighting, there's an orange light that was revolving. Very good um, description of what we now know to be Chinese lanterns but it shows that it's quite possible to have an experience with one of these things and actually believe it's something really extraordinary when, when really it's just, a, it's just a hot air balloon lit by a candle. One of the documents in the, um, the policy file is quite interesting. This was drawn up by an intelligence officer um, in 1978 and this was um, in preparation for the House of Lords debate on UFOs that happened early in the following year. And he, basically the, the Ministry of Defence asked all their scientific advisers for advice on what to say in this debate. And um, this uh, intelligence officer came back and he was talking about the possibility of visits to Earth by extraterrestrials. And he said one point that should be made is that if there were extraterrestrial space activity by other civilizations, then one would have expected some of the intensive radio listening searches carried out by reputable scientific organisations in, in America, for instance, to have intercepted some of the transmissions between spacecraft or between spacecraft and their original base. But as far as he was aware, nothing yet had been intercepted that was acceptable by reputable scientists as being evidence of alien intelligences. And since radio communication is somewhat cheaper than space travel, one would have expected rather more radio communication than actual visits. He then goes on to say that another good argument uh, against the extraterrestrial origin for UFOs is as follows. Recent American and Soviet space probes rule out the possibility of intelligent life elsewhere in the solar system. So he says that if UFOs are, are alien in origin, they must have come from outside our solar system. Now, if one makes a reasonable assumption about the number of stars in the universe and the proportion of those which have inhabitable planets, and then further draws up a list of all the interesting places in the universe that an intelligent community might wish to visit, 
One is driven to the conclusion that a visit to an insignificant planet, such as our, the Earth, of an uninteresting star, the Sun, would probably not occur more than once in a thousand years or so, even if one assumes that every intelligent community made, say, ten launches a year. And he basically says that, therefore, claims of thousands of visits in the last decade by alien spacecraft to planet Earth is just too large a number to be credible. All the files that I've been talking about are now available on the National Archives UFO website, which is www.nationalarchives.gov.uk forward slash UFOs.